Okay, we're now live. Hi, Elliot Fishman. Today is March 14th. It's Thursday. I hope everybody's doing well. I think it's, uh, what, what is today? Today's Pi Day, right? I don't know, Pi, whatever it is, but I think you get a discount on pies, and uh, I th hopefully you get a pie. Um, we're going to talk about renal CT protocols today. Just a couple little updates. One is we've been updating, and it's taken a little bit longer. Uh, CT is us the website. Sarah has it up, but it's not working fully yet, but hopefully by the end of today, no later than tomorrow. We apologize. Uh, what we were doing was putting in a lot of security, you know, in this crazy world where people decide that they're going to take down websites, take down hospitals, take down all sorts of things. You can't be too careful. And a whole bunch of new software came out to protect your website. And uh, so we were putting that in, and of course, it always takes longer than you think, because it, you know when you change one thing, it changes a lot of things, and security is never a trivial thing. So we want to make sure we're doing that. Uh, second thing is, you know, uh, April, March 14th, my daughter sent me a note that April 7th is the final episode of Larry David's, I guess this is his 12th year, uh, over a 25 year period, I guess. Um, it'll be interesting how this ends since he has said that this will be the last season. So we have four more shows. We'll be watching for the next 40 years, of course. But uh, uh, it should be interesting. And Stephanie did make the point that it'll probably be like Steinfeld. He'll probably end up in jail at the last episode since he is going to be tried, of course, in Georgia for giving somebody a bottle of water when they were waiting online to vote. So it should be interesting and uh, should be somewhat humorous. Anyway, um, other than that, um, in terms of protocols, I just want to go through the one thing I always will say. We all make misdiagnoses. We all miss things on scans, CT, MR, ultrasound, plain film. The best way of not missing something is doing the right protocol. Okay, if you do the wrong protocol, even if you look at everything on the study, you're not going to be able to reach the right conclusion. And so we know this if you see a lesion in the liver and you only have one phase, let's say arterial phase, could be a met, could be hemangioma, could be a number of different things. And if you only have something on a late phase or a single phase and it's a cystic renal lesion, it could be a high density cyst, it could be a renal cell carcinoma, it could be metastasis, it could be an abscess. And so one of the things we try to do, and we always talk about this, of course, is there's two things in terms of reading a study. One is, of course, the ability to detect a finding. So, hey, something's wrong here. And, you know, I've always said that if you only could say normal, abnormal, you know, the study is negative, the study has something in the kidney, I think you'll do pretty well because once you see something, then it's the strategy of working out the best diagnosis. If you don't see the finding, then you don't give a differential diagnosis. So we talk about AI, I talk about AI of the pancreas. Yes, it's great if an AI could tell you it's a serous cystadenoma, an IPMN, a carcinoma, a peanut, and we're working in that direction. But as I tell our colleagues in Microsoft, hey, if you just could tell me there's a lesion there, take a look, that will bring you a long way because if you know there's something there that you would have missed, you can go back and say, I think there's something here, maybe describe it better, come to a conclusion, or come to a conclusion that you need more studies in MR, EUS, PET, whatever it is you might need. But determining normal versus something there is obviously just such a important, important way of doing things. So I think that's really, really what you want to be thinking about um, when, when you're doing studies. And so the kidney, it's no different, right? Because in the kidney, when you think about it, non-contrast, is there a stone present or not? There's a lesion present, what's its base density? When you want to look at an enhancement, you need to know what the base is. If it's zero or under 10, you know it's a cyst, well-defined walls, 99% plus it's a simple cyst. But if something measures 30, is it a 
if you only have 30 on delayed, did it go up to 100? Was it zero? Did it go up, come down? Is it a cystic neoplasm? Is it a complex cyst? Is it an abscess? You really are kind of stuck without having the phases. One of the challenges we find are people do not do the right phases. They try to cut corners and it can work every once in a while, but in the big picture of things, the reason you develop well-designed protocols is to make certain that 24-7, 365, you're giving you and your colleagues the best chance of getting the right answer and treating and managing your patients the best possible way. So, if you tell me hematuria in the patients over 50, I'm saying non contrast through the kidneys, arterial phase straight down through the pelvis. If patients are under 50, under 40, surely you may not do arterial through the pelvis, maybe just through the kidneys, because the reason you do it through the pelvis is you want to pick up small bladder cancers. Under age 50, it's unusual to get bladder cancer. So as you try to preserve dose, perhaps you don't scan all the way through the bladder. You just do the kidneys arterial, so let's say the crest. You come back venous, again, we do it to the crest. We're looking really at the cortical medullary differentiation. We're looking for changes in enhancements, small lesions. Venous phase, we're also looking at the renal vein. Is it involved? How does the renal veins look? Obviously on the arterial side, we're looking at how the renal arteries look, for stenosis, the number, any abnormal vascularity, vessel wall thickening like in vasculitis. So arterial gives you the vessels on the arterial side. Venous, you're typically looking at the renal vein and into IVC. Um, arterial phase, which is typically 30 to 40 seconds, it's not a good time to be looking at the renal veins. It's obviously a big clot. Yes, you do fine, but it's very easy to overcall things or undercall things because you assume it's simply flow related. And then of course, excretory phase imaging is very important. You scan the kidneys, down through the bladder. Calices, ureters, so transitional cell carcinomas. You may see subtle findings on other phases, but the best single phase to say there's a transitional cell, both from detection and classification, distinguishing from other lesions, is going to be that excretory phase. You don't always get the entire ureter so opacified because there is peristalsis, but you get enough of it to opacify it, and you can look for transitions if the ureter is not opacified, you still can follow the ureter and see if it's thickened or dilated or has wall enhancement. So that all becomes very, very important. And then of course the bladder. I think smaller bladder cancers are better seen on arterial phase imaging, but if you have a reasonable sized bladder lesion, you are gonna see it very well on delayed phase imaging as well. As long as you're careful, obviously the bladder may not be fully distended there may be a fluid fluid level with contrast so it can be tricky and potentially uh, it can be problematic one thing when looking at the kidneys we've mentioned this many times before axials are great but you must be looking at the coronals and sagittals as well i also recommend and we've talked about this as well when you're looking at the uh, excretory phase we want to be at about five minutes, so we, we're not too dense, the contrast, and you don't get all sorts of beam hardening artifact. So things like papillary necrosis, small TCCs are easy to see. One way of enhancing your ability to see them is to do MIP imaging. So I think I like MIP imaging on the excretory face because it shows you the calyces well. It shows you the ureter very nicely as well. So again, you're gonna to have to do a little bit of work when you're trying to be really good at the kidneys, detection, classification, and then of course, if the patient did have a mass, staging, looking at adrenals and nodes, liver and the like, but we'll save that story for another day. So let's see, um, who's here today? Oh, I see Jay Jamie from, from one of our guys from uh, Glen Burnie and Pam Moses. Lidiana, hey Lidiana, how's New York? Lidiana has made the swap from uh, the Bay Area down to New York, so I have to see her up there soon. Uh, and um, 
I think Van Dung, we just went through the, some of the protocols. There's protocols on CTSS on the kidney and a few other people uh, saying hi, so we'll say hi back to everybody. Um, there is in the uh, website, there is a section on protocols and Lily has been giving me grief about not having enough protocols up there. We've revised the protocols and hopefully this coming week we'll have a lot more protocols up there, but I think some of the key renal protocols are there. Uh, and if they're not there, I'll make sure we have them up there by next week as the website comes back up. So with that, if you don't have any more questions, um, we'll stop there. And I hope everybody has a great day. See you soon.